Now, ground temperatures, they provide an important cue for when cicadas are going to emerge. And with spring temperatures trending higher, scientists are seeing shifts in when and where cicadas are going to come out of the ground. Since 1970, the average temperature in Washington, D.C. has increased nearly two degrees. And entomologists like Michael Raup say it's changing the behavior of cicadas. From other insects that I study and, and scientists study, we know that one thing cicadas are going to do is expand their range further north. So in a warmer world, there'll be more opportunities for them to go simply further northward. Scientists estimate that that two degree warming since 1970 is significant enough to have cicadas emerge as much as three days earlier. If we have exceptionally warm weather this spring, it may shift that emergence time, the peak emergence time from the last two weeks of May. Maybe they'll come out just a little bit earlier, maybe the second week of May. So this change in the behavior of what cicadas are doing is just another indicator to us of our shifting climate. I got a great blog that you can check out at WJLA.com on what you can do on this Earth Day to kind of help out and some other tips just to be a good steward of this planet. And I know that's what everyone out there wants to be is a good steward of this planet because we only have one. Yes, very good there point. We go. um, so literally, Veronica, just weeks out from these bugs emerging. That's right. Uh, coming up uh, probably in another two weeks, we're going to start to uh, hit peak. And then we're going to crest for about two weeks after that before we start to see a decline toward the uh, end of May, the early part of June. And Ooh. even sooner because they're of the coming. Change. I'm ready. It's the noise. <laughs> Yes. Ear noise cancelers, noise cancel Amazon and right now. You know, okay? it's going to affect us directly because we're outside <laughs> shooting stories. Oh, yeah, and definitely. And it's going to be in all of our sound bites. Let's take it inside, okay? <laughs> every single story. But shoot. it only happens once every 17 years. And we can bear with it, I'm sure. I'm now 636, and we know someone who just got their second COVID-19 vaccine shot. It was not me. Let's be clear about that, okay? <laughs> not you, not it yet. It was not me. It was me. 7 no. News reporter Victoria Sanchez, who has been covering COVID-19 and vaccines for more than a year, and she's yeah. been doing an excellent job. Amazing. It all came to this. She walks us through how it went. Your shot. Easy peasy, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thanks for getting your shot. Yeah, welcome to the Inova Stonebridge Vaccination Center. We're doing 4,500 people today, uh, and you are one of our lucky ones, so we're so happy to have you. So I am in line. I am scheduled for my second shot. I'm very excited. We have done close to 50,000 doses just at this site overall, uh, and then Inova as a total has done over 338,000. Good to go. This has been six months, but we have some fantastic volunteers that have joined our team. You can see everyone in their red shirts is helping volunteer Fairfax, our Fairfax Medical Reserve Corps. Yeah, doing it to honor my mom. She was uh, three days away from getting her first shot when she passed away. So the people that are left have to carry on. Number two, please. Number 11, please. I just got my table number. It is number 10, and it is Paula. Here she is. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. I'm smiling under my mask. I know. <laughs> Smile with your eyes is what they say. It's official. I got my second shot, my vaccination card, and even a fancy sticker. In two weeks, the vaccine will have fully kicked in. And I'm ready to see my parents. All right. Woo! It's been a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. How cool is that, oh, right? Oh, my gosh. Yes. So I haven't seen my parents in a year and a half. They live oh. in California. But in two weeks, I'll be ready to go. It's, it's the hug. It's going to be the hug, it's okay? Be and the yeah, hug. you're back at work today, so I mean, it didn't knock you out. Right. So a lot of people, most people, about 78% get some side effects, tiredness, fever, chills. Uh, I feel fine. And okay. I got mine about 18 hours ago. I How's feel that arm? okay. The arm is a little sore. It's the arm. That'll get you. Yeah. That's the only thing. It, but other than that, yeah. I mean, it it's fine. I feel totally fine. So some people do get side effects. I didn't. I'm at work and I have that smile on my face. There so we thank go. Thank you for walking us through that process. That was cool. Thank that you. That was cool to watch. Congrats too, by the way. Thank Exciting you. I know, time. right? I know. There we go. Congratulations. And go to your parents. Home we said I know, hi. I know. We throw you a party if we could. All right, Victoria, <laughs> thank you so much.
As we all know, change many aspects of our lives. And in some ways, that's a good thing as businesses found ways to improve their services. And that includes this, the grocery business. 7 News' John Gonzalez is live in Potomac right now with how this trend could continue. Good morning, John. Robert, good morning. More than a year ago, it started with the toilet paper craze, and this has really been one of the few constants during this pandemic. One of the errands that has proven to be very essential, people needing to buy their groceries. And during the height of this lockdown, for many families, it was the only place they were traveling to. So how will grocery shopping change moving forward in a post-COVID world? One of the most notable shifts proved to be America's en masse move from in-store shopping to online grocery. According to a new Instacart survey and Harris poll, nearly half of Americans, 48% say they ordered groceries online during the pandemic, and many say they will continue to. This is an opportunity to change your habits around how you go to the grocery store. It no longer needs to be mom taking her afternoon off to go to a busy, crowded grocery store. It can now be a collaborative thing with the whole family. Kids can explore and choose what they want. Um, you know, dad can build the cart. And budgets may remain tight for many Americans post pandemic with 36% of Harris Poll survey respondents saying that the quote how to save money on groceries is among the food lessons they've learned during the past year.